Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another edition of um, About Talk. Um, as promised earlier uh, last week, uh, we said we'll be talking about um, food allergies today, and that's what exactly we want to want to do justice to. So, uh, if you are here with us, just uh, kindly follow up on the presentation. And if there is, uh, if there are others that you want to, you want to join, you want uh, the, the person to join us on the presentation. You can also tag the person under this post, and. Um, if there's any question you also have you're welcome to ask and if there's any other point of view that you want to share as well you're definitely welcome to join us we want it to be as interactive as possible and uh, want people to learn from other people's experiences uh, either the social impacts of food allergies or the medical impact of it if you've had experiences with uh, food allergies just reach out to us in the comment section and then we we'll... of course everybody will be able to learn and then we'll be able to um, get some benefit from this uh, talk show so let's start food allergies um causes and management this is uh produced by microbiotics communication units and uh, so these are the contents these are what we want to look at the definition the types and causes the signs and symptoms differential diagnosis and then the diagnosis as well then as well as the treatments so now um food allergies or food allergy they are common in nigeria but unfortunately it's not until recently that uh, people started giving uh that they deserve and um from what we have here, uh, you can see that uh, it's actually a, an immune reaction, mm -hmm. an immune reaction that people react to in food. Your body reacts to this uh, immune reaction, and then uh, well, when you, your immune system reacts to the protein in this food, and it's mediated by what we call immunoglobulin E, or sometimes not. So, and um, uh, these reactions eventually they are usually um, they come up immediately after you ingest these foods. It's not now come up with various symptoms which can involve the skin uh, the GIT and respiratory tracts those are the three major uh, systems that are affected in the body whenever there is uh, allergic reaction to any food and of course a lot of any food can actually cause allergies but over the years we've um, realized that this some foods are actually much more um, associated with food allergies than the others and then uh, we are going to also take some look at these foods so that we would um, of course the examples some of the examples are already here we have milk egg peanuts shellfish with nuts and also many others as well so um and uh let me quickly talk about immunoglobulin e that's ige is one of the ig that is present in the body 
and then they play a role in what we call hypersensitivity reactions. So reacting to let's say dust, pollen, or you reacting, your body is always reacting to any other to some external uh, external substances. So this uh, kind of reaction is usually mediated by IgE. So um, food allergies is one of the uh, type of uh, um, allergies that are mediated by immunoglobulin E, and they affect a lot of lot of people around the world. A lot. It's not only uh, in Africa. We have a lot. In fact, there's a, there's an article that says that most of the food that are predominant in any section of the world, in any continent of the world, most people are usually allergic to it. But we'll go over that later. So, what are the causes of uh, um, food allergens? Are of course they are glycoprotein. They are resistant to breakdown. So when they get inside the body, the body might cannot really. So they are transported across the mucosa surface of the intestine and then they are able to stimulate uh, some of this uh, allergic reaction that we usually uh, uh, witness during food allergy uh, reaction. And there are, there, are two types. there are two types. We have one that is immunoglobulin E mediated, which is type 1 hypersensitivity. Then we have others that are non immunoglobulin mediated. So uh, the one that is IgE mediated, uh, you can see that it's uh, what we call the, uh, some immune factors, and the reaction usually occur maybe within a few hours after injection of this food and of course the symptoms might be respiratory gastrointestinal or even cardiovascular uh, the non uh, ig mediated are or a little bit delayed they are not as uh, they are not as uh, um, frequent like the ig mediated and sometimes they come with uh, fewer symptoms or they come with what we call delay symptoms and they are usually more or less uh, localized to the GIT. Most of the symptoms are gastrointestinal in nature. So, okay, these are the food that are known to cause food allergies uh, around the world. Uh, these are the ones that are commonly known. The funny thing is that uh, individually we have other types of uh, um, or, or other type of food that we can be allergic to, but these are the most commonly uh, known. Um, we have uh, cereals that contains glutenin. Yeah, glutenin is a very common cause of uh, food allergic reactions. A common cause of food allergy. Then we have some people who are also very, very uh, allergic to uh, seafood, seafood like uh, crabs, shrimps, and lobsters. Some are allergic to eggs, fish, peanuts, soybeans, milk, nuts, uh, mustard, celery, sesame street seeds, <laughs> sesame seed, please. <laughs> then lupin. Then we have others that are also uh, allergic to shellfish. Of course, I know more about shellfish because I have a friend that is allergic to that as well. So these are the food that are known to cause food allergies around the world and the common types. So what are the signs and symptoms? Now, the signs and symptoms of food allergies, uh, they, they vary. They vary based on um, the individuals that are involved the, uh, the development of the immune system of that fellow as well so they are usually like i said the other time they are usually in three uh, forms it, it's, it's either the manifestation come in form of gastrointestinal symptoms it can come as a, a skin reaction and it can come as respiratory distress. So, uh, under 
a gastric intestinal manifestation. We have, of course, we have uh, different types. Of course, the one that is uh, enterocolitis syndrome, protein in this enterocolitis syndrome, which involves vomiting, abdominal distension, bloody diarrhea, anemia, and even weight loss. And they are usually provoked by cow milk and soy protein based formula. Now, the, the gastrointestinal manifestation are also very commonly identified with kids, infants, and young children. So, uh, most of the time, you'll be able to immediately see the reaction on the child the moment uh, you, you fed the child the uh, food that, is, uh, that the child is allergic to. So we also have uh, a food, uh, the protein in this uh, proctocolitis, which the uh, GIT manifestation is blood streaks through the stool that be passing traces of blood. And we have uh, protein in this enteropathy, which is associated with uh, stasiuria and the poor for several months of life. The baby will start having uh some erratic weight gain which is actually not uh common with child with children that doesn't have uh, food allergies so for skin manifestation we have what we call as at a topic uh, dermatitis which most people know known, uh, know as uh, eczema that's a way of uh, um the way in which this allergy uh, shows themselves that's one of the reactions that we cause. Then we have, of course, acute urticaria, and then swelling. I'm going to show the images of this skin manifestation later in the next slide. Then we also have what we call as uh, uh, a dermatitis, which are more or less, um, uh, I don't know, somebody mentioned that some a patient of hers is always reacting to toothpaste. This is what the person is actually going through because um, some of some individuals react to some of these substances which are not really food, but there are also substances that come in come toothpaste and uh, uh, chewing gum, lipstick and other medication. So the body usually uh, uh, gets irritated and reacts to this uh, form of uh, uh, to these uh, substances that causes allergies. Then the last one is what we refer to as respiratory manifestation. And this one usually you can have even cough, wheezing, and a lot of symptoms that looks more or less like asthma. Asthma, uh, asthmatic symptoms. Um, I think one of the um, by the time we get to the end of the um, presentation, I'm going to mention something about anaphylaxis, which is actually the most dangerous uh, symptoms that anyone can um, show, anyone that can display during food allergies. And the respiratory part of the anaphylaxis is actually one of the most dangerous in the world and can lead to death. So these are the uh, skin manifestations due to food allergies you can see the eczema dermatitis you can see the hives and then you can see the swelling and geodema so it's these are the manifestation of the skin the other ones the images uh, are not actually available for either respiratory or for um, gastrointestinal manifestation so now, um, under differential diagnosis, differential diagnosis, um, differential diagnosis is um, uh, diagnosis that when two conditions look alike, but they are very different. And most of the time, even from what I've heard people talk about, there's uh, most people. Um, identify food intolerance food allergies the kind of they miss the two together and it's actually very important this is actually one of the most important parts 
of the presentation. Food allergies and food intolerance are very, very different from one another. Very, very different from one another. Uh, differences. Uh, most of the most of the um, uh, people, most people who take milk and they said they are lactose intolerance, even from the word you realize that those are not allergic reaction. That's an, uh, a food intolerance, not food allergy. And from the differences, uh, there are three, more or less about four differences between both here, uh, between both uh, food allergies and food intolerance here. Um, the first one is that in food allergies, the immune system thinks a protein is dangerous and even though it is harmless and what it does is that once they realize that this protein gets into the body, they start synthesizing immune uh, system factors against this protein, attacking this protein and also the part of the body thinking that it is dangerous but it is not. And the, for food intolerance, the body does not have the ability to break down that particular food substance. That's what leads to food intolerance. For, uh, again, let's use lactose intolerance as an example. In lactose intolerance, the body lack lactase that could easily break down lactose, which is one of the uh, key components of uh, milk. And because the body could not digest that or break that down, then the body starts showing the symptoms of, uh, uh, of a food intolerance. And if you look at the symptoms of food intolerance, you can see that the most common one that most of us usually experience is flatulence when you are passing out gas or wind. Then you also have bloating, you have a cramp, vomiting, and diarrhea. Uh, for the symptoms of food allergies, usually, uh, like as, uh, as said in the previous slide, involves, the, uh, involves reactions from the skin. A GIT and respiratory tract, which involve itching, swelling, skin rash, uh, and all of that, even to the, yeah, anaphylaxis causes a blood, uh, a drop in blood pressure, hypotension, and even unconsciousness. Mm. For food allergies, the symptoms start as soon as you get, in fact, within one to two hours, you start showing the symptoms immediately. So uh, there's no delaying in this. The moment you take it, your body starts reacting to it. Whereas um, for food intolerance, it takes a longer time. Let's say uh, maybe four to five hours before it starts uh, in any of the symptoms for food intolerance. And under food allergies, small amounts of that food that you are allergic to will cause severe allergic reaction even if it's just a spoonful even if it's just a, a slight taste you can start reacting to it immediately it's it doesn't matter if it's large amount or small amount whereas in uh, food intolerance the body can still accommodate um body can still accommodate uh, body can still accommodate uh some small amount of uh of uh, these uh, foods. Sorry for that break. Okay, then these are the other differential uh, diagnosis. So the other, if you can go through those, let me quickly take uh, a little break as you go through those uh, differential diagnosis.
All right, welcome back. Um, so these are the other differential diagnoses. The uh, um, the look-alike of food allergic reactions. The look-alike, yeah, that that's the best way in which I can actually uh, describe them. The, this this kind of when you get to an hospital and uh, you are probably suffering from uh, food allergic reactions. These are the other uh, conditions, these are the other disorder or diseases that they are going to check for to make sure that you are not suffering from this and then they will, instead of treating this one, they are now treating uh, allergic reactions. So they usually check out for all these ones and uh, if these ones now prove not to be uh, what uh, you are supposed to uh, what you are suffering from, then they will now eventually run up on allergic uh, reaction and start treating. So, so um, how do we diagnose um, allergic reactions? How do we diagnose allergic reactions? Um, most of the sorry. Uh, Most of the time, we, we the, the best way to actually diagnose allergic reaction is to uh, to check. Of course, that's very dangerous. You, how will I know if I'm allergic to this? How about having a taste? But like I said, <laughs> the other time, you can't use a testing to actually check if you are allergic to a particular food because that's dangerous as i said the other time you even a small amount can actually lead to severe uh, allergic attack so there are other ways in which you can actually check for so the first thing is when you get to an hospital a clinic or a laboratory where this uh, where you want to uh, do your diagnosis, where you want to check whether you are allergic to a particular food. If you've already shown uh, the signs and symptoms of a particular, uh, to a particular food, then of course, the first thing to do is to ask for the symptoms and to compare with what you ate previously that can lead to that uh, particular allergic attack. So uh, the other one that can be done is also to do a blood test and to check whether your body is producing immunoglobulin E against some certain food. So if there's a large amount of immunoglobulin E, IgE in your system, when you take a particular food, that means that you are likely allergic to that food. Uh, the other one is also uh, elimination diet. If you are, if you are, uh, re if you are always coming up with the symptoms, or some signs every time you take a particular food and then you now decide not to take them and then you now realize that the signs or symptoms are disappearing each time you don't take that food that means you are allergic to those foods you're allergic to those food and then you have to uh you you have to keep track of that and you start avoiding such then we have what we call provo provocation tests now this the this one uh, is what i talked about the, the other time about you taking a certain amount of the food uh, and um, for for vision tests you take a small amount of the food under supervision you take a small amount of the food under supervision and then uh, you see whether they were they're going to trigger the symptoms of this allergic react of this uh, of the allergic reaction that that food is under medical attention so that if the symptoms actually proceed uh, to a severe state you can easily be given quick medical attention then we have this actually is the most common one that's the image that is shown there the skin prick test the skin prick test this the this is usually the standard around the world uh, checking for um, um, allergic reaction 
either even for food or for anything. But it should have been done for food. Uh, the solution of the food uh, allergens that you believe you are uh, allergic to is uh, is prepared and then uh, they are pricked and then they are inserted under the skin. Then the skin will be observed to maybe either turn red or itchy or bumpy. That skin manifestation that I showed in the previous uh, uh, previous in one of the previous slides. Once those things are seen, then that means you are definitely allergic to it. So prayer is usually the safest and the most uh, should I say non-invasive of the tests you can do to diagnose whether you are allergic to a food or not. So please, it, these are important notes. It should be noted that uh, to check if, because uh, allergies usually allergies usually go away, some of these allergies usually go, go away with, uh, as somebody grows, some of them even disappears. So regularly, tests should be carried out to know whether the food allergies have gone or they are still there. Then, uh, if if you are if you are allergic to milk, or uh, you should be tested more often than those who are allergic to peanuts or other nuts, especially if uh, because of um, the severity associated with milk, and uh, and also because milk allergies go away with the years as you go, people usually have uh, less and less uh, allergic reaction to milk. That's why it's different from intolerance. Intolerance doesn't go away, but allergies actually do go away for milk. So, so what are the treatments? Of course, the treatment involves uh, uh, a lot of different method, uh, different ways in which you can treat them. Of course, the best way you can is to stay away from those food. You can stay away from those food. Uh, you can get uh, dietary counseling from dietitians, uh, and then uh, get more information about the food that you can eat. And the, if you know that that food is actually important, the foods you can replace them with. And then you have to recognize this food when you went when you go to the supermarket to buy food, so that <laughs> you don't think you are dodging uh, something, and then you are ending up with that same uh, food substances. In fact, I think this is one of the cases we had in the past concerning a genetic modified food, and we're going to uh, talk about that in the future. So, uh, of course, for those that, uh, for milder symptoms, they usually self-resolve if the, the reactions, if the symptoms are not that severe, eventually the body will readjust after the uh, Allergens are already shot away from the from the body, um, and uh, uh, there are no drugs for now to stem um, allergic reactions. But antihistamine is known; it's one of the uh, um, one of the drugs. In fact, probably the major drugs known to uh, modify the immune system or the uh, reaction the immune reaction of the body so antihistamines they work to some certain extent they reduce the reactions to certain extent and uh, of course you can antihistamines can easily be gotten over the counter just as the pharmacist in charge and then you'll be provided with antihistamine then um Prebiotics and probiotics too are recommended, but there are no experimental backing for them yet. So uh, I think I've done uh, a talk on probiotics before, so they can also be used. Then there is what we call uh, desensitization, which is um, allergen-specific immunotherapy. It's being used for other form of allergies, but uh, its effect on food allergies is not yet known. So these are the basic uh, three types, that's three mode of treatment that you can have. Then anaphylaxis. Anaphylaxis is the last uh, slide we'll consider before leaving. Anaphylaxis is the most severe complications of food allergy. We're going to do a, a, a whole topic on this. This is what actually kills people in uh, food 
allergic reactions. This is what kills people. It's, an it's a medical emergency and a life-threatening acute hypersensitive reaction. Of course, it's, it evolves rapidly. The, 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 people die from anaphylaxis within few hours that it happens. Those who suffer real allergy, allergic reaction, the severe type, within, if no care is not taken, one to two to three or four, five hours, the person has, has already died. So it's actually very, very, very important. We all uh, um, talk on anaphylaxis probably in the next few weeks. So, um, and the, of course, uh, the cause of death is usually due to respiratory collapse and uh, the person will pass on. The symptoms are also, um, uh, can also be likened to the symptoms observed in, uh, um, uh, what do you call it, in other allergic reactions. You can have respiratory symptoms where it will be difficult for the person to breathe. We have hypotension where you have a, a terrible low blood pressure. Then end organ dysfunction. Some of the organs will start failing. Maybe lungs, uh, liver, and the likes. Then uh, gastrointestinal symptoms, which will uh, include uh, painful cramps and vomiting, even sometimes with blood. So uh, it's a little bit dangerous. And these are the treatments. Treatments include uh, airway management, the contamination of the offending agent, intramuscular injection of uh, epinephrine, IV fluid resuscitation, a using of, uh, of corticosteroids, antihistamine, uh, bronchodilator, vasopressor, and a lot of others. But like I said, begin to do a more detailed uh, talk on anaphylaxis in the future. You can see the images here. Those are the those are, are the symptoms that somebody can get when they are being they are experiencing anaphylaxis, uh, loss of consciousness, confusion, wheezing, cough, difficulty in breathing. You can the hives will develop as well, small swollen eyes, swollen lips and tongues. The swollen is dangerous because it blocks air from getting into the lungs. Then you have a faster heart rate and even lower blood pressure, you have abdominal pain and so this this adaptive is is even the major reason why food allergy is dangerous so uh we are going to talk about it in detail like i said in the next uh, few weeks so thank you for listening i, I hope you were able to uh, gain one or two things we don't want to make it too long so that it won't get too boring if you have information you can reach us you can reach out to us you can go to the website uh Go to a contact, uh, a contact, uh, sp uh, the contact page. Uh, send us uh, information. Send us mail. Uh, you probably easily even just send us mail directly. Uh, info at microbiotics.com.ng. Of course, we'll pick the information up there and then we'll definitely attend to it. And even under this uh, post, you can also reach out to us type your question, describe your experience. We are still very much available to answer some of these uh, inquiries. So till we see you next time, thank you and stay healthy. Bye.